Well, hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Now, recently on this channel, I have expressed my appreciation for mechanical clocks and watches. It's not that I didn't have this appreciation, it's just that I focused so much on the quartz stuff and all the Casio stuff that you probably didn't think I had a deep appreciation for mechanical stuff. And I do, and now I'm just showing it a little bit more than I used to. So, uh, mechanical watches, mechanical clocks, and finally, this thing that showed up in my life just a, a few weeks ago. See, what happened was, for years, I was interested in getting uh, a grandfather clock. I mean, starting when I was a kid, uh, in, in the 70s, when I first became aware of grandfather clocks, wow, I want one of those. But of course, as a kid, you don't have the budget for it. You can't just say, hey, mom and dad, everyone else, let's, uh, let's buy a thing for me and put it in the house. No, no. And it's expensive. No, no, so that didn't happen. And over the years, you know, it's like, well, where am I gonna get one? They're still kind of expensive. What if I move? And finally, uh, I cut through all that and realized I'm probably not gonna move and I don't wanna move. Um, I, I can make a space for it. And what can I do about the cost? So I found a used one on the classified ads and uh, it was just a perfect fit and it's in great condition. It's an older clock, but uh, the, the previous owner, a great, uh, a, a great one for appreciating clocks, a, a clock fan, uh, a man after my own heart and his wife, they, they both loved it. And so um, they, they took great care of it. And when they were ready to part with it, somehow the planets aligned and I was the one who discovered their clock. And, it, and, I, and I love having it here in my house. So now if you will join me for just a few minutes, I'm gonna tell you everything I know about this Howard Miller grandfather clock. Now, first of all, I call it a grandfather clock. If you buy a new one today, a more generic term they like to use is floor clock. And that makes sense, you know, you got a wall clock, you got a mantel clock, you got a desktop clock, why not have a floor clock? And if you don't speak English, uh, <laughs> you know, translate floor clock to another language, that makes sense. Transfer, tra translate grandfather clock, uh, nobody knows what that means. So I, I suppose, you know, generally speaking, that's great. I don't think it's about political correctness or, you know, people sensitive about gender neutrality or things like that. It's just that floor clock is a name that makes sense. But I'm probably gonna still call it a grandfather clock because, uh, you know, for, for most of my life, I've known these as, uh, you know, grandfather clocks. Uh, according to Wikipedia, long case clock is also a generic term for this style of clock. It's been around since uh, the late 1600s and for many, many decades, centuries even, this is one of the most accurate styles of clocks you could have because you can dial in the pendulum to uh, go back and forth at a very precise speed. And so this is kind of, you know, the master clock for a lot of folks. And then, um, you know, for, for a while there, they were also kind of prohibitively expensive, but then price went down a little bit so the average person could afford one, but still not super cheap. Um, right now, it's all about craftsmanship because, you know, for super cheap, you can buy a, a quartz clock at Walmart and you'd have really good timekeeping with that. But uh, this is all about the craftsmanship. The case itself is a big deal. And you will find, if you look around, almost no two grandfather clocks are alike. You know, if you go to a place that actually sells them, you look them up online, there's always something different about them. Mechanically, they might be the same but uh, the face could be a different design. The moon dial could be painted a certain color and be different in that way. And the case itself, different wood finishes, different little accents, uh, little metal pieces, whatever. This has kind of a bonnet top is what they call that, but there could be one where it has, uh, you know, little pointy things that stick up and they're they are called finials. So lots of really, uh, uh, how about inlaid wood and different carvings on there? So lots of different things that can make, uh, make the budget different on these, uh, depending on the craftsmanship of just the woodworking itself. This one is, is kind of simple compared to a lot of the ones that I've seen, but I really like that. And so um, you know, I, I'm, I'm really happy with this. On the face itself, there's a little bit of a design here that I really like in the, in the middle. Um, some, some of the ones I've seen lately, they have, um, uh, it, it's kind of an open face right here, kind of like a skeleton watch uh, idea. So if you look in here, you can see some of the gears and stuff moving around just right here in the middle 
Um, not, not too common, but it's out there. With this one, if I look in here through the side, I can also see the mechanical stuff from this angle, so I don't really miss being able to see it from the front. I, I can see it from the side. Now, uh, down here, the weights are being held up by cables. There's kind of a cable drive thing, and when it's time to wind the clock, I put a key here in the front and wind it, and that lifts these weights up on the cables. Now, some of the uh, clocks that are a little bit less expensive might still be around where they have a, a chain instead of a cable holding up each weight. Now, uh, th though I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to say, although I'm not an expert on the mechanics of it, that the chain drive clocks aren't as good mechanically. Um, but, but whether or not that's true, I just like the look of the cable holding the weights. So, uh, and, and then you got that little that little pulley there uh, just above the weight, and I like to see that turn a little bit as I uh, wind the weights up. Uh, one thing to keep in mind on the weights is that they are different, uh, different weights <laughs> themselves. So um, even though they, they look like they're the same size, uh, one weighs more than another, and uh, the one in the middle weighs the most. So they should be labeled clearly in case you ever need to take them off and move the clock and then put them back on. Uh, they should be labeled clearly as to which one is the left weight, which is the right weight, and which is the center weight. Yeah, I, I weighed them uh, just for the fun of it. This one over here on the, on the left side is seven pounds. This one here on the right side is nine pounds. And on this clock, the one in the middle is 10 pounds. And they do different things. The one in the middle actually runs the mechanism that keeps the clock going and also turns the, the moon dial. The one on the right side only turns the mechanism that, uh, that plays the melody every 15 minutes if you have it turned on. You can select off. Uh, and then the one on the left side only plays the, uh, the hourly chime. So it strikes one big kind of bong sound for each hour. If it's one o'clock, it, it'll do it once after playing the melody, uh, two o'clock, twice, three o'clock, three times, etc., all the way up to 12 o'clock. So that's what the weights do. Uh, it's an eight day movement on this. So if you wind it up all the way, it takes eight days for them to go all the way down. And, and they actually won't go all the way down to the floor inside the case. They'll stop before that. And, uh, and then the whole thing will stop. So uh, it's probably a good idea to just choose a day of the week uh, and, and wind it once a week. And then your eight day movement, it'll be just fine. And this thing will run continuously if you give it that little bit of attention. Uh, I talked about the chimes. Now this one uh, has the selection of three different tunes. Uh, the, the more traditional one that most of us are aware of, you know, the, the, the every 15 minutes you play part of the uh, Westminster chimes. At the 15 minute mark, it's a shorter, it's only uh, four notes. At the half hour mark, it's four more notes, so eight altogether. And uh, the 45 minute mark, it's, uh, you know, 12 notes. And then at the, uh, at the straight up hourly position, it will play the whole 16 note Westminster chime tune, followed by striking the number of hours. This one has a little selector switch, so instead of the uh, Westminster chimes, you could actually play St. Michael's chimes, which sounds a little bit different, or the Whittington chimes, which uh, sounds very similar to St. Michael's, although uh, they are a little bit different. And so you've got that selection there. Or the other selection on this one is off. So what happens when you, uh, when you switch that selector to choose your tune, there's a cylinder inside uh, here, and it's kind of like the cylinder on a music box that has little pins that stick out. And those interact with uh, the hammers that actually um, strike against the rods that play the tunes, okay? So when you select a different tune, it shifts the whole cylinder back and forth so that a different set of pins are moving when, uh, when the melody is playing. Or if you have it switched to off, then it's, uh, it shifts the cylinder to a, to a spot where no pins are interacting with the hammers there. And so what you'll find is as this thing runs throughout the week, if you have it turned to off at any time, uh, it's still every 15 minutes, it will run that mechanism, but because the cylinder has shifted to a silent position, even though it's turning, it's not making any, any tunes play. 
these weights, you can line them up when you first, uh, when you wind it all the way. And throughout the week, whether you have the chimes turned on or off, the, the, the weights will maintain the same position relative to each other as they slowly go down. Okay, so that's kind of nice. Uh, I, I kind of like to stagger them a little bit because I just think it looks neat. And also, I, I want to play with the clock. So rather than uh, wind it once a week, how about I wind this weight and then two days later wind this other weight and two days after that wind the other one and just kind of play with it like that. Maybe I'll get tired of that, but for right now, I like to do that. Also, okay, so, uh, so that's the selection on the melody for the chimes. Over here on this side, there's a little uh, switch to select uh, the hourly chime to be either uh, on or off. So you have the ability with this clock to only play the melodies and not play the hourly strike every hour, or play the hourly strike and not play the melodies, or have them all on or have them all off. Now with some newer clocks, they've, uh, they've kind of uh, responded to people's preference for having the, the chimes going throughout the day, but overnight when everyone's asleep, uh, can we have them just stop? So on some of the newer ones, there's a selection where you can have the chimes stop overnight. So um, I think with those, maybe about nine or 10 o'clock at night would be the last time it will chime uh, either the melody or, or uh, the, the melody and the hourly strike will be silenced then overnight until you know six or seven in the morning. So you have that selection on some newer movements. This one doesn't have it that way. So, uh, you know, there you go. All right, uh, the, with the moon dial here, you'll find that uh, this one, it's, it's very simple. You know, it's kind of like that, that nice shiny brass finish with some, uh, you know, some, some writing and some illustrations on there with kind of that brown, uh, you know, ink and, and lettering and stuff like that. Uh, but with some of these, uh, you'll find that the, the moon dial can, can be very elaborately decorated, painted different colors and, and uh, all kinds of different designs you can, you can do on that moon dial to make it fancier or more plain whatever your preference is. Um, you know, but that usually comes with the clock. So that's part of when you select your clock, uh, the woodworking and uh, that moon dial are just gonna be part of it. You probably won't modify that after you buy it. Now with some of the lower end grandfather clocks, uh, that will just be, uh, if it has a moon dial, it might be one that doesn't move. It's just decoration. It's not meant to show you the actual phases of the moon throughout the month. It's just a little decoration thing. I don't know why they put that on there. I don't know. Some grandfather clocks, you know, they may maybe a more modern design or they want more of a round face and kind of a curved top that matches the curvature of the, of the clock face. Um, so they might eliminate the moon dial from some of those. So you'll see that out there as well as you're looking at floor clocks. Moon dial, sometimes uh, it's fake, sometimes it actually moves, sometimes it wasn't even meant to be there at all. All right, with this clock, when I first got it, it did not have a mirror inside of it, and um, that, that's fine. What I did is I just went and found a mirror that was pre-cut just, you know, down at the home improvement store that would fit in that space and uh, propped it in there without making any major modifications. I didn't, you know, screw any uh, screws in there or, or do anything that would uh, make it kind of a permanent mark on there. I tried it on there. I liked it, so I just left it there. But if I wanted to take that out again, restore it to its original condition without a mirror, uh, that would only take a few seconds and it'd be back to where it was. Also, it came with a, a light fixture down in the very bottom of the case and uh, that, that just used a, an incandescent bulb, the kind that you would sometimes have on old paintings and stuff, lights that were meant to light up paintings and other artwork. And I replaced the original bulb with an LED bulb. Uh, and apart from that, I, I kind of left that alone. But then I decided, you know, I wanted the, the rest of the brass in there to kind of sparkle. So I found an LED strip and I wound that up through the hole that was already in the bottom of the case and I kind of, uh, put it around there and I kind of like the way it, it sort of sparkles there with all those little LED uh, lights uh, making accents all over that uh, nice shiny wonderful brass so uh, I can take that off if I want to um, and again restore it to its original condition in just a matter of moments uh, nothing permanent about the way I've uh, I've done that perhaps the only thing I should do to be very responsible would be to uh, maybe drill a hole up here near the top somewhere and secure this to the wall 
just in case of any kind of uh, you know accidental someone bumping into it or an earthquake or something like that little strap to keep it from falling down I would just secure some sort of a strap uh, from the clock to the wall and then uh, we'd be just fine as far as that goes now with this clock it has these uh, these rods for the melodies okay so the hammers strike against those rods and that's how it plays those songs now with some of the more higher end clocks if you want to really step it up on your budget you could buy it with a movement that instead of using the rods actually has uh, tubular chimes so big nice long chimes and they're very musical very lovely sound but also you know it's going to cost you extra if you go with the tubular chimes on your very wonderful grandfather clock or floor clock this one has what's this called a bonnet top i, I like this a little bit some simple engraving on there that i like as well uh, if you want to get really fancy sometimes they've got uh, different places where they've got pieces that stick up pointed pieces they call them finials you know very classic styles there and uh, well if you like that of course you you'll be able to find that uh, again i'm satisfied with what i have uh maybe i'll get another one uh later with the finials but for now uh, i'm i'm appreciating this one now this clock has a little kind of a skeleton key to open it up. I keep the door locked just to kind of, you know, prevent anyone from messing around with it and just to protect everything and keep the dust out of there and whatever. And now with this opened up, you can get in here and you can wind it. So uh, with this one, you know, over here to wind the weight on the uh, far right side, this one here for the middle weight and this one for the weight on the left. And all you do is turn that counterclockwise and watch the weight go up if I turn it all the way it will stop so I don't have to uh, you know give it a whole lot of force there it's, it, it winds very gently and then takes uh, if you wind it up all the way it takes about eight days for it to unwind all the way to the bottom with this one right here in the middle of the face it has a second hand but I have to tell you that second hand is not perfectly accurate if I were to get it to be perfectly accurate with a, a reference like a quartz clock or an atomic clock or something like that uh, I could tell you that it, within a few hours it would be significantly off however th that doesn't mean that the clock is keeping poor time it just means that this second hand is is more or less just for decoration it's kind of synchronized with the pendulum and the pendulum is not necessarily going back and forth at a, at a perfect one or two second interval um, but but it is moving at a speed to where uh, over the course of a day or a week or a month it's keeping very good time but just don't expect that second hand there to be perfectly accurate all right, I just want to go through a few other things real quick. Uh, when you set the clock up, it should be level, both uh, you know, front to back and side to side. Um, it's, it's not super heavy, but really to be on the safe side, you should have two people move this at any given time. When you take out the weights and the pendulum, which you should do before you move it, uh, you know, you're taking away about 30 pounds or so. And so uh, it, it makes it so it, it's easy enough to, to lift with two people. The awkwardness really requires two people. And before I moved this, I did look up some videos online. One was actually from the Howard Miller Company, an old video with some tips and some instructions on what to do before you move the clock from one place to another, all the things you should do. Um, so you should probably have it professionally serviced every three to four five years is what I've been told. I think three years probably sounds a little bit like too much, but uh, what you want to do is, of course, find someone that will make house calls. I found one in Salt Lake City that said they would make house calls because it really doesn't seem like it, it would make sense to pack this thing up and take it to someone to have it serviced and then haul it back. It seems like that would uh, you know, be more risky than just leaving it unserviced, uh, right? But do keep it clean you know, and, and let someone who really knows what they're doing take care of checking out the specifications and making sure it's properly lubricated. I saw a video recently, a guy had a clock with a similar um, movement to this one and he was playing around with it and, and it was running a little sluggish on the chimes and he just took a, a can of WD-40 and was just spraying it all over the inside of the clock and I thought, all right, I'm no expert on this, but uh, I'll bet that's really a a, a bad thing to do to the clock so just you know keep, be careful you know refer to people who know what they're doing and, and probably don't don't 
<laughs> don't haphazardly spray WD-40 all over. Oh, that sounds terrible. Now, the previous owner uh, did point out to me that it's best to use a cloth, you know, maybe cloth gloves or something, you know, that, that when you when you handle the weights or the pendulum, you don't want to get your fingerprints, your, your finger oils on there or do anything that might scratch it. So just use a soft cloth whenever you handle that, and I think you'll be okay. Then the other important thing here, I think, is to get to know whether or not it's right to set the time uh, by backing the minute hand up or moving it forward. Now, the previous owner told me that on this movement, you should only move it forward, you shouldn't move it backwards. And uh, that's true on some of my other mechanical clocks. Um, but, but I've also seen instructions on other Howard Miller clocks where they recommend you move the hands backward uh, when, when you initially set it up. But just remember, when you move the hand, uh, move the minute hand and let the hour hand follow. Don't touch the hour hand because it's, it's made to, uh, you know, just, just follow along with whatever the minute hand is doing. And if you were to scoot the hour hand out of alignment, then of course the chimes would not uh, chime at the correct time. So um, yeah, just make sure when you move the hands to set the time, only touch the minute hand. And uh, for me, uh, you know, when it's daylight saving time, it's easy enough for me to move the minute hand ahead one hour. I think when it's time to move the hand back one hour, I'm just going to stop the pendulum, set a timer, and restart it one hour later. I think that's going to be my approach to that. So anyway, this is about everything I know so far about my Howard Miller grandfather clock. Uh, I hope that this is instructional to you in case you're thinking about getting one. Um, and if I learn more, I guess I'll just make another video. And I hope you will join me for that one right here on The Good Timekeeping Show.